Did you know that the secret to mastering your emotions lies in the simplest, most overlooked habits? From the way you hold your body to how you reflect on your daily experiences, these small shifts can create a monumental difference in how you navigate life's chaos. If you want to stay calm under pressure, build unshakable emotional control and turn conflicts into opportunities, you need to start mastering yourself first. The best advice I've ever heard, emotional mastery isn't about suppressing feelings, it's about understanding them. And it starts with how you anchor your mind, body and spirit. Avoid this mistake if you want true mental strength, thinking it's all about willpower alone. The real power comes from aligning your actions with your thoughts and emotions, creating harmony in how you approach every challenge. In this video, we'll explore transformative strategies that bring together timeless stoic wisdom and practical everyday habits to help you gain control over your emotions and reactions. Ready to discover how small changes can make a massive impact? Let's dive in. Number 1. Staying calm is a choice. Anchoring your emotions. Imagine waking up to a peaceful morning, birds chirping, sunlight pouring in, and a cup of warm coffee in your hand. Everything feels right. But then, reality knocks an urgent email, a forgotten appointment, or an unexpected problem. How quickly that peace evaporates, leaving you tense and reactive. Now think of someone who seems unshaken by such chaos. No matter what life throws at them, they remain composed. What's their secret? The answer lies in a simple truth. Staying calm is a choice. It's not a gift reserved for the naturally unflappable, but a skill anyone can develop by anchoring their emotions. At its core, calmness begins with perspective. Life doesn't come with a guarantee of smooth sailing, but you have the power to decide how you respond to its storms. This means acknowledging that while you can't control every situation, you can control your mindset. For example, when faced with a rude comment, you can choose to react angrily or pause and respond thoughtfully. The former hands control to the other person, the latter empowers you. Practicing mindfulness can help reinforce this mindset. Simple techniques like deep breathing or grounding exercises can create a buffer between stimulus and response, giving you the space to act intentionally. Do you remember a time when you lost your temper over something trivial, a delayed flight, a misplaced wallet, or even a petty argument? In hindsight, the frustration often feels disproportionate to the issue. Now, recall a moment when you handled a challenge with calmness. Perhaps it was helping a friend through a crisis or solving a work issue under pressure. That feeling of control and resilience didn't just benefit you, it likely influenced others around you. Calmness, after all, is contagious. What if you could harness this skill in every aspect of your life? Imagine the doors it could open, improved relationships, enhanced decision-making, and a sense of peace that isn't easily disturbed. Could learning to anchor your emotions be the most valuable investment you'll ever make? Number 2. The Power of Listening Over Speaking Picture a conversation where someone truly listens to you. No interruptions, no judgments, just full attention. It feels like being seen and valued, doesn't it? Now flip the scenario. How often do we rush to speak rather than listen, eager to share our opinions or solve a problem? In our fast-paced, opinion-driven world, the art of listening is often overshadowed by the urge to be heard. Yet, it is through listening that we build deeper connections, foster understanding, and gain insights we might otherwise miss. Listening is more than staying silent while someone else speaks. It's an active process. It requires setting aside your own agenda, suspending judgment, and being fully present. When you truly listen, you signal to others that their thoughts and feelings matter. This creates a foundation of trust and respect, whether you're talking to a partner, colleague, or stranger. 
Moreover, listening can enhance your perspective. By hearing diverse viewpoints, you gain a richer understanding of the world, which ultimately makes you wiser and more empathetic. Think back to a time when someone truly listened to you. Maybe it was during a difficult period in your life or when you were sharing a dream or idea close to your heart. Their attention likely felt like a balm, a validation of your experience. Now consider a moment when you failed to listen, perhaps interrupting someone mid-sentence or dismissing their thoughts. The missed connection lingers, doesn't it? What if you could become the person others turn to because they know you'll genuinely listen? Imagine how this could transform your relationships from resolving conflicts more effectively to creating lasting bonds. Could the power of listening be the most overlooked superpower you already possess? Number three, viewing arguments as collaboration, not competition. Imagine two people building a bridge from opposite sides of a river, working together to meet in the middle. Now think of an argument you've had recently. Was it more like building a bridge or tearing one down? Arguments are often framed as battles with a winner and a loser. But what if instead they were opportunities for collaboration? Shifting your perspective from me versus you to us versus the problem can turn conflicts into productive discussions. When you view arguments as collaboration, your goal shifts from proving a point to finding common ground. This requires empathy and curiosity. Ask yourself, what does the other person value? Why do they hold their perspective? By seeking to understand rather than dominate, you create space for meaningful dialogue. Additionally, focus on the language you use. Avoid blaming or accusatory statements and instead frame your points around shared goals. For instance, we both want what's best for this project is far more constructive than you're doing it wrong. Reflect on past arguments. How many escalated because of a need to win rather than resolve? Perhaps it was a dispute with a partner, a heated workplace discussion, or even a disagreement with a friend. Now think of a time when collaboration guided the outcome. Maybe it was brainstorming with a team or resolving a family issue through open communication. The satisfaction of working together is far greater than the hollow victory of being right. What if every argument could strengthen your relationships instead of straining them? Imagine the trust you could build, the problems you could solve, and the personal growth you could achieve. Could redefining arguments as collaboration be the key to unlocking harmony in your life? Number four, mastering your body to master your mind. Close your eyes and imagine a moment when you felt truly powerful, not because of what you said or did, but because of how in control you felt. Maybe it was during a workout, a run, or even something as simple as maintaining good posture during a stressful conversation. There's a reason moments like these stand out. They reflect a profound truth. Mastering your body is the gateway to mastering your mind. The connection between the two isn't just philosophical, it's deeply biological and understanding this relationship can transform how you experience the world. At the heart of this concept is the idea that your body serves as both a mirror and a tool for your mental state. When you're stressed, your muscles tense, your breathing becomes shallow, and your posture slumps. These physical manifestations in turn reinforce the stress in your mind. However, when you take deliberate control of your body, straightening your posture, slowing your breath, or even smiling, you send a signal to your brain that everything is okay. This interplay is known as the mind-body connection, and it's a cornerstone of practices like yoga, meditation, and martial arts. Consider the power of breathing. It's something you do every moment of your life, often without thinking yet its impact on your mental state is profound. Slow, deep breathing activates your parasympathetic nervous system, which calms your body and mind. This simple act can ground you during anxiety, 
sharpen your focus in moments of chaos, and even help you sleep better. Similarly, movement, whether it's a brisk walk, a stretch or a full-blown workout, releases endorphins and reduces cortisol levels, both of which enhance your mood and mental clarity. Think back to a time when your body felt out of sync, perhaps during an illness after prolonged inactivity or following a poor diet. How did it affect your mood and productivity? Now, recall a time when you felt physically strong or vibrant. Maybe you just completed a challenging hike or followed a healthy routine for weeks. The mental clarity and confidence that accompanied it weren't coincidental. Your body and mind thrive as a unit, and when you prioritize one, the other benefits as well. Now imagine the potential if you fully harnessed this connection. Could focusing on physical mastery unlock hidden reservoirs of mental strength? What if controlling your body became the foundation for controlling your reactions, emotions and decisions? The journey to mastering your mind might begin not in your thoughts, but in your muscles, breath and posture. Number 5. Practicing Stoic Reflection to Build Emotional Control Picture yourself at the end of a long day. You sit quietly, replaying the events in your mind, not with regret or judgment, but with curiosity. You ask yourself, what did I do well? Where did I falter? How can I improve tomorrow? This simple habit, known as reflection, has been practiced by some of history's greatest thinkers, including the Stoic philosophers. Far from being a passive exercise, Reflection is a powerful tool for building emotional control and resilience. Stoicism teaches that the key to a fulfilling life lies not in avoiding challenges, but in learning to navigate them with grace. Central to this philosophy is the practice of reflection, which involves examining your thoughts, actions and emotions with honesty and detachment. By reflecting regularly, you become more aware of your triggers, patterns and areas for growth. This awareness is the first step toward mastering your emotions rather than being mastered by them. The Stoics often used journaling as a form of reflection. Marcus Aurelius, for instance, kept a personal journal where he recorded his thoughts, struggles and aspirations. This wasn't about documenting his life for posterity, it was a way to confront his humanity and strive for virtue. Modern science supports this practice, showing that journaling can reduce stress, clarify thoughts, and enhance emotional intelligence. Whether you prefer writing or meditating, the act of stepping back from your experiences allows you to process them more objectively. Think about a time when emotions got the better of you. Maybe it was an argument, a moment of frustration, or a decision made in haste. How might things have turned out differently if you'd paused to reflect before reacting? Now consider a moment when you did take the time to reflect, whether it was after a tough day or before a critical decision. That clarity and sense of control likely shaped a better outcome, didn't it? The beauty of stoic reflection lies in its accessibility you don't need a quiet retreat or hours of free time to practice it. It can be as simple as asking yourself three questions each night. What went well today? What could I have done better? What will I focus on tomorrow? Over time, these small moments of introspection can add up to profound changes in how you perceive and respond to life's challenges. What if reflection became a non-negotiable part of your routine like brushing your teeth or eating dinner. How might it transform your relationships, career and sense of self? The answers lie not in grand gestures, but in the quiet, consistent practice of looking inward to build outward strength.